good morning um i don't know the last time i did a vibe out zone interview on the weekend this early but if my voice is raspy it's because i literally just woke up 30 minutes ago um so today we're going to be interviewing um a lovely bella i don't want to ballet thank you dancer um and she is located in london now um her name is nascasia so i'm gonna go ahead and add her into the chat yes 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 and it's okay if y'all are barely up this morning i'm barely up this morning so hi hi yes good morning well it's evening for you but morning yes. for us <laughs> Um, so I was kind of just doing like a rough um, explanation of who you are, where you're from. Um, so I just kind of want you to go ahead and basically we're just going to introduce yourself. Um, so introduce yourself. If I say your name wrong, please correct me. I'm still waking up. Um, and we're <laughs> no going to do problem. a little speed round real quick, okay? Yes. Okay, so my name is Natasha Meyer, and I am from Vienna. I was born there, I had my education there, and I was dancing there for eight years, um, where I was, like, growing in the company, and I got the offer in London, like, a year ago. And I took the job and started at English National Ballet um, the past November. So I'm here for since, like, half a year, approximately. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for everything that's to come. And, and we finally start our performances in like one, two weeks. So that's oh, really wow, that's exciting. exciting. Yeah. That is super exciting. Are you nervous at all about the performances? I mean, I'm really looking forward. I feel like I'm going to be a bit nervous maybe a few days before. But yeah. it's been so long. I'm just so excited to get back on stage that it's like... It's just so beautiful to have that chance again. Yeah, that's so exciting. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Um, so we're going to start our little speed round. Our speed round is just kind of um, real quick, uh, goofy. I like to call them questions <laughs> um, just to kind of ease any nerves or anything like that. And then we'll get started into the questions. So the first mm -hmm. part of the speed round is what would you say your favorite season is? Um, probably like spring, I okay. think. Spring, art, I mean, I love some, I don't know. That's a tricky one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Christmas, so that's the good part about winter. But other yeah. than that, I definitely prefer having like light clothes and going outside and not having to carry a, a massive coat and, right. and boots every day. So, so oh, I yeah, do like it. It snows where you're at. See my my it, winters. Yeah, snow. it rains more than it snows, but um, but yeah, it can snow. It wasn't snowing that much this okay. year, but yeah. okay, well, good. Um, what would what would you say is a favorite creation of yours from another artist? Mm, you mean like like ballet pieces or? It could be a ballet piece. It mm -hmm. could be just an art piece. It could be a favorite song of yours. Any kind of form of art that's something that you really, in, like it's a favorite creation of yours. Mm, I mean, since I'm most aware of like the ballet productions, I think one of my most favorite pieces is Romeo and Juliet, which I mean, in different versions, is just so beautiful or Manon as well. I do really appreciate different types of art as well. I recently got a lot into like paintings and yeah. I can't really name a uh, special painters yet because I feel like it's a new passion. Yeah. But I've been starting to look at some and it's really inspiring. And yeah, I mean, I love all type of arts, to be honest. Okay, wonderful. I would say I'm the same way. I can't name artists, but I definitely can admire the pieces that I see if I'm like yeah. talking about. Um, what would you say is your favorite like genre of music? Another tricky, <laughs> tricky one because if you would see my playlist, it's like a complete mash of everything. Of everything. Because I feel like it comes in phases. It's like at some point I would listen to like really um, lyrical music and then 
I would go on to like very like intense music. It's just like swaps all the time. Mm -hmm. I guess I do like kind of chilled music. Sometimes a music that puts me in a good mood or just like triggers emotion in general. I like that. I'm the same way. I think I listen to like, I, I guess I'll listen to it depending on the mood I'm in. Like one day I might listen exactly. to something that might trigger me to be yeah. a little bit more sad and like feel the yeah. emotion I'm having. That's, that's great, no? Like it's nice to like fully experience these emotions through music as well. Definitely, definitely. Um, what would you say your favorite animal is? Um, maybe chipmunks. <laughs> I love chipmunks. I used I have to have one that as a pet. <laughs> I have never got that answer. That's a first time answer. Um, <laughs> and then uh, last but not least, what would you say that your spirit animal is for yourself? If you could be an animal, what do you think you would be? I feel like, I'm not sure. I've been looking for my spirit animal for a long time now. I kind of like feel really connected to elephants. Okay. But... I'm not I'm not sure if that's my spirit animal but I would I wouldn't mind if it was. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, good, good. Those were some really good answers. I've never got chipmunk before. So that was definitely <laughs> a first one like chipmunk. Okay. That's, I always get like lions and like um dolphins I think are always like the two like top common ones, but elephants are beautiful. And they're yeah. really wise animals. And cute as well. They're so cute with their little trunk. <laughs> yeah. They just be trunking. Yeah. Um, and they like lift it up when they're trying to eat or drink. Like it's yes. so cute. <laughs> yes. Um, so first and foremost, uh, you were born in, is it Vienna? In Vienna, yes. Okay, Vienna, Austria. Um, and you were there for most of your life. So yes. would you mind discussing what it was like living and growing up there? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's a very beautiful city and I have to say it's very privileged and it's very safe. And I I was always aware of that because, I mean, I've been traveling a lot during my career as well. I've been to all kinds of places, even poorer countries. And I realized Vienna is like a place where you just always feel like there is not a lot of crime. The streets are very safe. Like It's a very nice community everything's very organized people are generally like not like very poor or very rich but everyone is sort of wealthy like it's a really nice lifestyle the quality mm -hmm. of life is incredible i mean the city has been voted for like the best lifestyle like many years in a row like in the world i think even so it's it's a really great city to live in it's it's very comfortable i would say mm -hmm. there is nothing really to worry about much so that's of course very nice and and people are nice i mean I have a lot of friends there but i just feel like in general like compared to a city like london it's definitely a much more london is definitely way more um like exciting in a way because it's more like, like busy. going on yeah like very busy, it's very more busy. Like exactly, like crazy more busy. Yeah. So I feel like in in a young age, living in London is definitely more exciting mm -hmm. in some way. Okay. Okay. Um, where would you say that your uh, favorite place in Vienna? I can't speak this one. Vienna is. What would your favorite place be of all time? My favorite place. I mean, I think the most time I actually spend in the opera house. <laughs> so I would almost consider that my favorite place because it feels like home. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I mean, also, I do love, like, my parents' place and there's a lot of nice parks and um, beautiful streets and I, I do love the shopping streets as well. <laughs> but I, I really like the opera house. It's, it's a really nice place. So. And you've been dancing since you were five, right? So you basically, like, lived yeah. in the opera place. I mean, in the opera place, I I start, like, I was a part of the company when I was 17. Okay. But I've been performing before that because I was in the ballet school of, of Vienna 
of the Vienna State Opera Ballet since I was seven years old. Oh, wow. So we sometimes went to go. So I've, I've been knowing this opera house for a long time. That's, yeah, that's true. Definitely. <laughs> um, what, how was the upbringing with your family? Like, what were your parents like? Um, they're great. <laughs> um, I feel like my mom is, is sort of like, just like really taking care, making sure everything's fine, really like helping me in, in every situation, always there, like um, reminding me to do things that I sometimes don't want to do, like when it comes to like financial things and stuff like this, she always makes sure I have an eye on everything, right? Then my dad is, was always like, the one that was very playful that mm -hmm. has like um I also have a brother and so so he always like um we always played games and and we were up to like a lot of fun things and we went on adventures and I had a really nice childhood like growing up I have to say I have a really good connection to my family as well oh that's wonderful so you said you have a brother how old is your brother is he younger than you or older than you um, he's two years, two and a half years older, so he's 27. Oh, okay. And so you're the baby of the family. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then what's your relationship with your brother? Like, you, I know you said you have a good relationship yeah. with your family. Um, what does your brother do? And are you guys kind of farther apart now? Um, he lives in Germany now. So it's not like, yeah, so we don't see obviously every day, but we also have a really good connection. Like we call once a week and um, he studied physics. Um, okay, he so went he's to smart. Physics. Very smart. Yeah. He's like a genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now he works at the like um, medicine like university and they do like, um, study sometimes and like he, he does like some little projects and helps the students and the teachers and like so he works at the university and yeah he seems very happy there okay that's cool my dad uh, majored in physics so I know that oh, your brother cool. has to be extremely smart extremely yeah. smart um, yeah. so he can be working I can't I can't do, like I like math I don't like science so it was like, I do I, like math too, yeah. Yeah, they just I think I'm like you in that, yeah. Yeah, and physics you have to like both because it plays them hand in hand, yeah. but I'm like, nah, I don't like science. I, um, I feel like with physics you just need to be able to know everything a bit somehow. Yeah, like I, everything in the right, world. Like your brain has some to way. be your brain has to be like this big and mine's like this. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't be able to do that. But um so you said so you started dancing at five or at seven? At five. At five. Um, was there any like pivotal moments when you were getting from the time that you were first dancing until you were 17? Was there any moment that you kind of wanted to not do ballet? Was there kind of like a moment where maybe it was too stressful or, you know, you were just kind of like, eh, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I mean, there's many moments. They they always come and go. Like throughout my career, throughout throughout my education, they just always happen because it is a very hard job, and you have to be like fully committed. And it's just like a lot of sacrifices you make as well. And just because of that, I feel like every ballet dancer has these moments where it's like I, I just can't anymore. So, but then you always get past it, and you're actually really happy that you didn't give in so I mean it's just a part of it all right okay okay um was there any like special performances from the time that you were five until the time that you were like 17 so you started you know branching off a little bit more um that really was a like milestone for you where you just you felt good about the performance and it was just it went how you wanted it to were there any like performances like that that happened and occurred yeah, I think I was like 13 or 14 when I got the chance to, to do my first kind of principal role. And it was like the young, like Clara in Nutcracker. So it was that version oh, of Nutcracker that, that was performed then. There was like a young Clara that was dancing in the beginning of the ballet. And then the grown up one that was danced by a ballerina from the company. So I was very young and I was already getting that opportunity, which like, was very exciting and it was a huge deal 
for me and it, it taught me so much just being on stage having to carry a ballet telling a story and I think that's when I really fell in love with that profession as well okay I love a nutcracker that's, I love it <laughs> um so I know that you um did a majority of your training at the Vienna State um opera ballet school like we had discussed um and I know that there were some accusations about that schooling did you experience any bad experiences when you were there or was it more you know a good professional one I didn't have any bad experiences I think it's really hard to to speak for everyone of course because we all make our own experiences and especially right. as a child it can be very difficult to say who experiences what because it's always very different from the inside but me personally I like I was doing very well they they taught me a lot gave me a lot of chances I even got to travel and I was very happy and and I learned a lot oh, okay and where did you travel at when you were at the um, ballet school so where were some places that you got to travel we went often to Italy because it's quite close to Austria oh. so we had a few performances in Italy from time to time I think we had sometimes in Hungary we even performed in Russia like in small groups not the whole school but it was like always a few of us so we went to quite a few places which was awesome yeah <laughs> I loved it that's great. Italy. Did you like Italy? I mean, do you remember like, you know, oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I love it. Italy, but yes. Okay. I have a friend that's um, from Italy and she speaks so highly of it. Every time you hear her talk, she loves it there. It's great. Have you been? No, I need the, oh. the farthest. So I lived in Germany. I lived in Germany when I was little because my dad's military. Um, okay. And that was the first and last time I went to Germany. Um, so I haven't really like traveled out of the U.S. except for like um, Puerto Rico, um, and that's it. Because my dad's Puerto Rican, so our my dad's side okay. of the family's from there. Um, yeah. But uh, other than that, no, I want to though. But then COVID happened and of kind course, of put a yeah. wall on like me living my best life in my twenties yeah so, but I do I want to I I want to travel at least to just experience more before I have kids yeah. I feel like once I have kids you know that kind of puts more of, a it's really of yeah. course yeah it's more difficult right <laughs> but dang it Italy and Hungary that's exciting that's, that's yeah. exciting um so do you mind kind of talking about a typical day that it would have been for training, like the minute that you go, that you wake up and then the minute you go to sleep, um, like kind of emphasizing on um, maybe just like, did you guys have to have a certain height and weight for any of the dances or to be in the school? Oh, in school, I should talk about the day in school or, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the, the height and weight. Like, there is not really, like, a guideline, especially in school, like, how tall you have to be. Because, I mean, everyone grows differently. You can't mm -hmm. really say students have to have that height because then all of a sudden they grow 20 centimeters. I mean, it's really hard to keep track. Yeah. And about the weight, I don't quite remember. I feel like they did sometimes put us on weight just to keep track. And then maybe like tell people to be more cautious or to eat more or stuff like this. So just to like have an eye on it. Um, overall, I would say it wasn't like the main thing. A typical day was like, so when I was in lower school, we used to have training in the afternoon and school in the morning. Oh, okay. But then in the upper school, it was the opposite. We had training in the morning and school in the evening. So if I remember right, the training in the morning started at 8 a.m., which meant that I woke up at like 6 every morning to get ready to have breakfast and leave home and be in the studio at 7 a.m., Maybe I even woke up at 5.30, I'm not sure. Like, I woke up really early. Uh -huh. And then I was warming up for an hour. Then we had training, and then we had different subjects, like pas de deux, character dance, variation, point, like, all these kind of things. I think until about, like, maybe 2 p.m. And then we would have, like, about an hour, I think, to go to the school, which wasn't in the same building. 
to like <laughs> eat on the way or however it was possible. And then we had school all afternoon until about six o'clock in the evening. And then I would go home and do homework or study or relax but I feel like I was most of the time I had to study or if I didn't have time I would wake up even earlier the next day to, to like study. get my things done yeah so it was really intense actually like if I think about it now as a grown-up I'm like wow I mean every day like waking up at like 5 30 until 6 and then keep going like with homework and stuff that's very intense but yeah, it did. It, it worked. It is definitely. Um, it definitely builds character as well. <laughs> yeah, I think about oftentimes just going to school and like being up and having to go like you know like just for various yeah. hours. I couldn't do it, but I guess like it kind of teaches you how to be on a schedule. I guess you know yeah. when you get older and you have a job and you have a schedule. Yeah. Um, but um, so do you have any friends that you were? at the um like that you started your ballet journey with are you guys still friends now like lifelong friends uh yes actually um some of them for sure there's one girl for example she's dancing in vienna now it's quite funny because we were already before we even went to lower school like already in preschool basically we we started ballet at the Vienna State Opera Ballet together and we were really good friends then we had the whole school together and then um when she joined the company I think we were in the company together for like maybe two years then she went to um Hamburg in Germany then she was freelancing and now she actually came back to Vienna when I left. <laughs> but we're still really good friends. But yeah, and I mean also some others. That's yeah. wonderful. That's good. Especially to have like lifelong friends like that. Um yeah. especially because you know, you guys tend to travel. It sounds like, you know, now you're in London, she's back where you guys are from. Um yeah. so would you say that uh, do you guys ever have to compete against each other or is there ever like a competition between you two that is kind of like I guess fun so to say because you're like hey you know good job like good luck but you know break a leg <laughs> I think actually not not really somehow or not that, that I'm aware of I feel like because we are so hard working on ourselves I never had that feeling like we would be like thinking about each other too much because I think we're so concerned about gathering ourselves that it actually doesn't really matter what others do. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can be an inspiration. You can see like, oh, wow, she improved a lot. Like I have to, you know, like push more. I have to improve more, but not in a way of like too competitive in a sense that it would be unhealthy, I think. I oh, never yeah. felt it. Before. Absolutely. Um so I know you said that when you were 13, you got the Nutcracker um, kind of like solo for yourself um, to be able to perform. And then it taught you how to tell a story through ballet. So do you mind explaining like how it is that you tell a story through the way of ballet and in, in your dance and in the way that you guys, you know, perform? Um, I think it, it really depends on the piece. There's different approaches and some roles um, fit us better than others. So I, for example, when I have to play some some young girl, I, I usually don't really struggle. It it comes very natural <laughs> natural to me to just be like a child on stage. <laughs> but then there's many other roles and characters that um, we definitely think a lot about. It's like thinking about every movement we do, even to see like, um, for example, right now I'm working on Black Swan and. Oh, there is wow. like little things and it just like it really just matters on how you hold your chin sometimes like if you show dominance or if you kind of like you know have this like sassiness and like it's like these little movements that we have to be really aware when we do what how we really like show the character mm -hmm. so that's definitely like a process you approach during the rehearsals but then obviously if it's like a whole story ballet there's like a lot there's sometimes scenes where we don't dance but more like really act and it's really important to know the story to to really feel that personality Mm -hmm. to really have like a picture of what you want to be like who who you are and and really like personalize this role also in your own way because everyone approaches it differently which 
makes it so beautiful i think because we are all different yeah black swan that's a big piece yeah i love it that's exciting <laughs> that's so exciting um so i know that you worked alongside like very um distinguished choreographers um is there any particular choreographer that made the learning process like an absolute joy for you like it was just such a good experience oh there's so many i feel like Luckily, I, I got to work with a lot of choreographers throughout my career, and I, I definitely um, got to work with some some very exciting ones. That uh, like the process was just such a joy, and you just like learn and grow with each other. I, I wouldn't even be able to mention like one particular because I have like five names at once, and like it's a lot. Like so it that, sounds like they've all just been very good experiences for yourself. Yeah, and okay. very different as well. Okay. Um, and then what about the connections with your friends, the choreographers and directors in the industry that inspires you the most? Um, I do have some very close friends that are ballet dancers. There's um, Nikisha Fogo, for example. I don't know if you know her, but like, She's in San Francisco now, or my friend James, or yeah, I don't know. There's there's just a lot of friends that are everywhere in the world now, and I feel like they've been always such a support, but also a huge inspiration. So that's definitely something. And then as well, like the director that was in Vienna, Manuel Legri, he was like our ballet dad basically, <laughs> and he, he taught us so much and. He's now the director in Milano, in Italy, of La Scala. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and he, he's just, like, someone you can never stop learning from. And, I mean, those, and then the teachers we had also under his direction, they just, like, gave so much to us. So there's just a lot of really dominant people in my life, I think, that, that made me who I am. It definitely sounds like throughout your career and the schooling that you went through, you definitely had very good people to learn and gain knowledge from, um, yeah. which is good. I mean, this is, a, you know, your career. So if you're able to, one, it sounds like you're always able to learn and that you're still learning um, and that you definitely uh, are appreciative of like, you know, when you had your first teachers to where you are now. Um, mm -hmm. So you, uh, we already talked about the Nutcracker. Um, and you're doing this one. So what would you say, me like, what, how long would you say it takes to mes memorize, I was about to say mesmerize, memorize <laughs> a routine? Like how often, like how long does that normally take? And then how often do you have to, per to rehearse it until you perform it? It's very different. It depends on the company. It depends on how much time we have. I see now in English National Ballet that we always, when possible, start quite early to rehearse something, which is very good. I was often in situations where it was like, okay, two weeks and, and you got to be on, like you got to know the steps. So when there's a lot of productions coming at once, sometimes we just don't have that time. Mm -hmm. So it, it really varies from company or from the, the schedule. But I think a good time to prepare, it depends depends also if it's like a full length ballet I think it would be good to have at least two months I mean you can definitely learn it in like one or two weeks but to really embody it and to really like make it good I think at minimum two months would be would be good and then also it feels like for me personally that I'm never actually feeling ready it doesn't matter if I rehearse like a year or if I rehearse a week mm -hmm. until I haven't had one performance. And it doesn't matter. Like I just have to have one show and then I feel ready for all the other shows. But it's just until that show, no matter how long I rehearse, I would always be like, not sure if I'm like fully ready. But then yeah. once you have that one show, you're like, okay, now let's go. Let's do more. Yeah, like you, you got this. It's no problem. Um, yeah. Okay. So it just kind of depends on the company and then the piece that you guys are performing. Okay. Yeah. Um. What would you say was the shortest time that you had to rehearse a big piece? Oh, I mean, there was once a situation that we had um, guestings in Madrid, 
and we were supposed to rehearse another production back in Vienna. Then once we would come back to Vienna, we would have two days left for another full length ballet I was dancing, which was La Fille Margadère. So the plan was that we would rehearse La Fille while we are in Madrid. But then the role I was dancing in Madrid, all the other casts got sick. So I had to dance every show, every night. So we didn't have time to rehearse. And my partner never danced that role that we did after in Vienna. So we came back to Vienna, we had two days. And we did it. I mean, it worked, but I was definitely like, I remember the moment before the curtain opened, I stood there and I was like, is that like really happening? Mm -hmm. How am I, how am I supposed to do that? Like, but it worked. It was actually amazing. It oh, was like good. even better. Yeah. yeah. So maybe the stress of having to like be like, you know, having to perform it so quickly gave you like that adrenaline yeah. to be like okay we can do this we just gotta get through all of this yeah. um dang that yeah that is someone in the comments said that that's scary um i could only imagine so everyone just got sick was this around the time of like covid when everything first happened or was just like people were just sick no no, no that was like years ago i think maybe like four years ago or something so people were just sick they were just sick yeah. oh wow i can't imagine i'd be like well i'm sick too because i can't i'm sick to myself i, can't I, I literally actually I, I woke up like the second the day of the second show and uh, i was like i feel sick too like i actually started feeling sick and i was so tired it was so intense and i was like but well, what if i'm actually sick like there's just no one who can do it so i was like i mean even if I'm sick, I, I can't be sick. So I'm just not sick. Like, that's it. There's Tell them about no... I'm not sick. We're not sick right now. <laughs> we have to yeah. enter this performance first and then we can be yeah. sick. <laughs> exactly. It's like, okay. you got to do this. <laughs> okay. That's, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. Um, I would have had a meltdown. I, my stress <laughs> would have just been like, yeah, you're sick. And I would have just been like on the floor. Um. <laughs> For your and out of your whole dance um, characters that you've had to portray, I can't think of the actual word I'm trying to say because um, I'm still like trying to wake up. Um, what would you say <laughs> that your favorite character to embody was, and then why? Um, I really enjoyed um, dancing Marie Antoinette by Patrick Devanne because I felt like the role of Marie Antoinette has a lot to it there's a lot of pain there's a lot of like there's just so much emotion and I, what I really liked about it is that the choreographer gave a lot of freedom as well he really made me understand the role and the character but I feel like he wasn't super strict about when I had to do what he just told me who I am basically and I had a lot of freedom in that really expressing myself the way I feel like was right. So I did really enjoy that. And it was one of these pieces where I'd say every show was so different. Like one wouldn't be the same as another just because it depends on the day of emotion. So that was definitely something that like was like pure enjoyment. And it was so sad. Like I was after I was really like, whoa, like. <laughs> Feeling the emotions. It was a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, so for the um, director, so when, how does it normally go about that you'll get your, do you get your piece first? The director kind of tells you how you have to do your, for your choreography. Um, and then he, does he give you like a certain date of when this will need to be performed? And like, does he help with like the rehearsal part of the process? I mean, normally there's like fixed dates of shows that will, they, they're always announced like a year before okay. that season. Oh. Or like half a before. So then we have the whole season that's set. And there's a whole program which shows on which dates. But we don't know what we dance. We don't know when we dance. So we would get that like maybe two months before we would, or three months before we would find out what we dance. And then later on we get the dates of which shows we're doing. And then so the director or the choreographer decides that. And then we just approach it and we perform it. And then next one <laughs> okay okay um 
So with performing, what would you say is your favorite part of the performance itself? Is it the audience? Is it the costumes? Is it the piece that you're performing? What would, if you have a favorite? I feel like you enjoy all of it. So I feel like that's going to be a tough question. But if you could pinpoint one. I, I mean, I do enjoy all of it. But for example, the getting ready for a show is something that, that feels very special and very needed. Like I couldn't just be like, okay, let's do it. It's like the putting on the makeup, the putting on the costume, the point shoes, the preparing. It's like such a ritual, basically, where you get everything together and you like slowly approach it and you slip into that role. And then it comes that moment that I actually, the moment I enjoy the least is like the five or 10 minutes before the performances when everything is still in front of you and you're like, whoa, am I really going to do that now? But then I think my, my favorite moment is when the curtain actually opens because it just like switches and like all the fear is gone and I'm just on stage and doing my thing. And then of course, I mean, the bow and the audience and the light, everything just like comes together. Oh, okay. Um, so out of the many costumes that you've had to wear, what would be a favorite costume that you've worn? Ooh, I... I don't know why. I mean, I'm sure there was more beautiful costumes, but the costume of Amor, it's like in Don Quixote, the little solo, which I did a long time ago. I loved it. It was this like golden tutu, which was basically weightless. It was the lightest costume I've ever had. So I really loved it because it really didn't annoy me at all. And I could just like do everything. So I think that was one of my favorites. But there were many really beautiful costumes, for sure. Okay. okay. I love anything gold. I love anything gold. Mm -hmm. Gold is a beautiful color to me. I mean, I feel like it represents, yeah. like, like authority. I feel like if you have gold yeah. on, like, you're very yeah. authoritative. Like, you know, like. It's very I'm royal. Right? Yes, royal. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm very about my business. Um, yeah. So you have, like, honorable mentions from the 2012 prize of the jury of international contest of the ballet schools in Benning. Benin. I don't want to say Beijing. that wrong. Beijing, oh. thank you. I'm telling you English. I'm not good at it. It's my only language. Um, and then you have one in the 2014 with the promo prize at the ballet club. What was your most memorable contest or competition? I think it was my very first one. So the first competition I ever did was in China. And it was a shock. That it was so hard and it was it was terrifying actually I was so scared and I got there like super jet lagged I've never been to China before it was very polluted I barely could breathe I was like I didn't understand when I was supposed to sleep or not I like woke up in the middle of the afternoon we would be like working at 10 in the evening we would start to rehearse and I was I mean it was so hardcore and I would see all the other contestants. There was like, I think there was more than 30 studios and all the studios were busy until like midnight or long. Like people were just working, working mm. so hard. And I was just so scared because I saw everyone. And I, I felt so intimidated and I was like, I'm not ready. Like I can't compete with these people. Yeah. So that was definitely like a memory. But it went well, and actually now I feel like it was such an important ex ex um, experience I had to make. But it was definitely like the competition after already, I was way more relaxed, and it went even much better, and it, it was so much fun. But the first one in China, it was like scary. It was yes. proper scary. <laughs> oh, okay. I can only imagine the intensity when you're, you know, rehearsing like other like against other contestants and having yeah. to feel like having like a poker face and being confident but then you know inside you're like I'm terrified yes exactly yeah. and especially being jet lagged you know that's yeah. exhausting within itself like without even having to rehearse yeah. being jet lagged yeah. is exhausting um so then you've also had continuous outstanding performances from 2014 your demi soloist your 2016 promotion to soloist and then your 2018 um promotion um by men is it manuel 
Um, sorry, what? <laughs> and what's his name? Manuel? Ah, uh, Manuel, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, that's really, like, fast. Like, 14, 16, 18. Like, that's, you know, it's, yeah. even though it's two years in between, that's very, seems very quick. Um, so I know that you probably worked very, like, diligently. I've listened to you talking about your rehearsals. Um, but do you think that there was any other reasons why you were able to pro get promoted so quick? Do you think it was, like, the pieces you performed? Would you say it was just, you know, you were constantly just, of course, you've earned it. But do you think there was anything else that helped you progress so quickly? I feel like Manuel just, like, really believed in me. And he he really pushed me. So it feels like every time I, I proved him, like, that I would deserve the promotion, like, I was working really hard then I would get promoted and then I feel like it would take a year to adjust to that status to really mm -hmm. get used to it to be like, well, still showing like, I got this, I can do this. And then the year after it will be again like, okay, let's push for the next one. And like just growing along the way and like working with him. And I think, yeah, basically that, I, I don't know what, what he thought about it. Right. <laughs> But tell him that, you know, that he saw what you were capable of and recognized and, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't want to say appreciated, but, like, showed that he seen it. You know, like, like let yeah. it be known that he saw how you were working hard and you deserved the promotion. Acknowledged. Mm -hmm. That's the word I was looking for. I was trying yeah. to think about the word. Um so you now, like we had talked about earlier, um, when we first started the interview, you are currently, um, you joined in 2020 the English National Ballet, um, and you're the anointed principal dancer. So that's like a highest rank in the professional dance company, is it? Yeah, there's, in every company has like different names and ranks, but like principal is basically doing like all like solo and principal roles. Yeah, so that's... Yeah very exciting congratulations to you um thank you what was a trigger point that kind of made you decide that you were ready to leave um vienna and transfer over to the english national i feel like all my career i always wanted to go to other countries i always enjoy traveling and it was always a goal of mine to dance somewhere else and to learn from other people but somehow when Manuel was direct in Vienna, it, it just never felt right to leave because he was just teaching me so much and he was he was so great. So every year I was like, I'll leave now. But then I was like, no promotion or this <laughs> or this role. There was always just something that kept me in Vienna. And then as soon as he announced that he was going to leave Vienna, I like I didn't care who was going to come after him. I was like, okay, that's it. That's the opportunity. When he leaves, I'll leave too. Like I will, I will go and I will experience something new. And then, yeah, I did okay. that. Okay. Um, was it sad when you guys kind of had, you know, not when you guys had to split, but like, you know, not being able to kind of be under him and learn from him um, in such close range? It was definitely a goodbye to remember. But it wasn't a goodbye because I feel like the ballet world isn't so big and we're still in touch and um, like all like colleagues and teachers and, and Manuel, we like, I don't think we're going to lose track of each other. We keep seeing things on social media or, or we are still yeah in touch. So, so it was kind of sad to end that era because it was very beautiful, but at the same time, super exciting to start a new chapter. Yeah, definitely. Um, and are you guys far from each other now? Did So you're in London. Did he go, you know, closer to Vienna or was, is he like? He, Manuel is in Milano now. Oh, in yes. Italy. Okay. In yes. Italy. Okay. And so yeah. is Italy close to London? Where's my map? I mean, it is not really close. It is... It's maybe two hours flight free, something like this. So it's it's okay. Okay. Everything is kind of doable. Yeah. Yeah, kind of close. I have a map here, so I'm like looking at my map, but for <laughs> some reason I couldn't like. I was looking at like New Mexico. <laughs> I, I don't know where I was looking at. I was like, this is not where I'm supposed to be looking. Um, so you know, lately, due to the you know 
occurred the state of the world because COVID happened and performances were kind of held virtually. Um, they've been, you know, being held virtually. So how was yeah. it? how's the experience from the transition of performing you know live and and you know with an audience and being surrounded by people um feels compared to having you know kind of like me and you doing performances like if you were to be performing yeah. you know how has that transition been it was like it came in different like parts of it so there was a beginning of all that where we really like stayed home, right? Did all the workouts and I was still very, very motivated. And I was like, okay, this can't take long. Might be a few weeks. We'll be back on stage immediately after. So I was like, I got to stay in shape. I, I did a lot. I, I even did a certificate to be able to teach Pilates and I was like working hard and then it came to a point, I think, where I was like, okay, hey, like, when is this going to end? Like, how are we going to perform soon? And then summer came and actually things opened up. I did have some shows in summer. And then it just, like, went up and down. And it was just, like, every time we would go back to being at home, it was getting harder. Because mm -hmm. it was just, like, I mean, yeah, at some point you just don't want to work at home anymore. Right. <laughs> and right. So, so it definitely came in waves. But... But I think now it, it is just even more exciting than ever that, that things look very promising again. Yeah, and definitely being able to go and perform again. I think it probably was, it, do you think it gave you more of like an appreciation of being able to perform live? Definitely. Like I even appreciate being in the studio every day, not yeah. having to train at home. It's just luxury and so happy to be able to use a gym, to be having people around. I mean, yeah. it's just everything now it seems like a blessing that's that's good i'm excited for you definitely um i don't like being in the house like i you know when we furloughed i didn't have to, i was home for like a month and a half i think roughly we mm -hmm. furloughed on the 18th of march i didn't go back to work till the 12th of may Whoa, so roughly, yeah. roughly like a month and a half almost two months yeah. almost two months but um i it, it was really rough um it was really rough mm -hmm. for me just because you know you there's things that we didn't appreciate like little things that we probably didn't think to appreciate yeah um that definitely became us of a appreciation because you don't have the luxury yeah. of being able to just have that like you know yeah um at your fingertips so to say um dang so i'm excited that's exciting for you uh yes. did you find any similarities or differences um or if you did notice any from performing virtually and the previous television performances that you've made. Um, and as your television performances or appearances, did you have a favorite moment of your new new year's concert um, in Vienna and then the opening opera ball or just the ballet documentary within itself? Um, so new year's concert was definitely always something really exciting that we had like filming is definitely very different to performing live it's not the same you repeat it over and over again you get very tired you have yeah. to keep bringing the same attitude because you don't know which take is going to be taken yeah so there is like no every one has to be like great because you never know which one will be the one shown and at the show you just like you do it once where you, you give your best but if something doesn't work you can't repeat it Right. So it, it's a really different approach and and both has their good and bad sides. So so definitely like it's very different. But and opera ball is another thing that's really different because there is a different floor, is a different size of stage and like the people are located differently. I d I don't know, it just it just feels really exciting though, definitely. Okay. And also to go to the ball afterward, it's great. <laughs> yeah, I bet. That sounds like a fun time. Um, and I, could, I couldn't I could be on television because I feel like at some point I would be like, okay, I'm done. Like, you guys have had to catch the one that you've needed. Like, between here and now, tell me you've caught the take you've needed because I can't do it yeah. anymore. Um, do you have any favorite productions so far that you've done? 
Um, ballet wise, you mean? Yes, ballet wise. Yes, ma'am. Um, favorite? I do love Onegin, which is very dramatic. That was one <laughs> one of my favorites. Um, of course, I, I love Nutcracker because it just has a lot of emotional value for me since it was like my first role. It was the role I got promoted to principal dancer. Okay. Like it, it was always quite a step for me. It was my first thing I did with English National Ballet as well. They like oh, okay. filmed it. It was a uh, online, like they put it on YouTube because of Corona. But like, so it, it definitely has a lot of meaning for me. So would you Sorry. say that? <clears throat> excuse me. I need some water. Um, would you say that you enjoy um more emotional pieces? Just because when I'm listening to you talk, like I feel like you yeah. like the ones that you're able, <laughs> not like yeah. you know emotional, but something that allows you to like really touch within yourself and get into yeah. yourself. So would you say emotional pieces are the ones that you enjoy? Absolutely. Because I feel like putting on a smile is one thing, but really accessing like emotions more than just happy and sad, but like pain, things like this, I, I feel like it's much more of like, a, it brings much more to a performance because it mm -hmm. feels more general, generous and like really giving a piece of yourself. Yeah. Then them putting on a mask if if you know what I mean yeah because if, if you're that like sweet performance like a little girl happy um about that falling in love I mean that's one thing but being able to make the audience understand that you are suffering that you lose someone that like yeah. things like this I feel like you you really have to access places and and figure out parts of yourself that you maybe haven't even experienced in real life okay okay um I like I think anything that allows you to be vulnerable um is always something that's very beautiful yeah. like for you to be able to kind of like you know allow excess in and also express excess out um of any kind of emotion like whether you're happy sad but especially yeah. pain and grief and sorrow like that's a that's a different kind yeah. of emotion to be able to tap into and express um mm -hmm. without I feel like without really having to show that you're you know like at, without actually having to feel that emotion genuinely you know like if you're not yeah. sad and you have to tap into being you know sad or if you're not grieving but have to tap into if you were genuinely you know grieving someone mm -hmm. um I like that I, I love that. Um, <laughs> so what would you say that your plans are um, for the future um, with your ballet career and being in London and, you know, being the principal dancer? Where do you see yourself going? I think for now, there's still a lot of roles I haven't danced. There's a lot I want to work on, progress, and just, like, take in. I I always really enjoy traveling. So... That was one of the reasons why I was like, I, I think London is a great choice and English National Ballet travels a lot. So there's a lot of places I want to see, a lot of different audiences I want to dance for. And like, so that's definitely the goal for now, for my career. And then I can't really see like the end or like, I don't really know what's my goal overall, to be honest. I think there's just so many little steps that she'll still like have to be made. So, okay, definitely. Okay, yeah. that's exciting. Well, so do you know places where they tend to um, travel to? Like, do you guys travel within the area of like London, Italy? Do you guys travel, you know, across the states? Like, do you guys come to the states? Yeah, we we do actually. I think it before Corona happened, we were supposed to go to. I think Chicago and um, Mexico and Japan. So like everywhere across the world, to be honest. So let's see how long it's going to take until we can do that again. I think right. there's something in, in planning. They definitely try to make us travel already next year what is going to be possible. Mm -hmm. But after that, I'm sure we will travel a lot again. So I hope also to the States and, and to to Asia and just everywhere, really. Yeah, that's exciting. Traveling is definitely a beautiful thing. You get to see different cultures and different ways of life, yes. with, you know, outside of, you know, what you're used to, you're generating, you know, common, um, normal. 
Um, yeah. But before we wrap up, because we're almost out of time, do you have anything that you would like to promote? Do you have any suggestions for anyone that may be wanting to become a ballet dancer? Um, you know, I'm going to kind of give the floor to you before we end it here. Okay, so um, I think in general, just I don't know if there's anyone watching who is in London. I, we have shows coming up, which is super exciting. So there is there's tickets already for sale. Also already for next year, they're they're already putting the tickets for sale for Nutcracker. They're already selling the tickets for the new production of Tamara Rojo's uh, Ramonda, which is super exciting because she's choreographing it. She's the director of the company. Oh, that's so exciting. That's so, so all of that is like, it's coming up, it's happening. So that's really exciting. And for, I think, young dancers who are approaching a career, I would just say like always stay true to yourself work hard and and just you know go your way never stop fighting and don't let anyone intimidate you and do your thing (laughs) (laughs) that's so good oh well i was i for one definitely enjoyed this interview with you i am so excited to see where you go from here and your performances and you guys being able to travel again um but super, you know, excited for you and this new journey that you've been on. Um, and I hope that, you know, you guys are able to travel and go and do, you know, what you've enjoyed doing your whole life, it seems like. And mm-hmm. thank you for giving us the time to, you know, interview you and get to know you um, and where your journey has begun and like where you're still going. Thank you. It yes. was really great. Yes. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Good, good. Okay, good. Because I was like, dang, I hope I'm not like too tired. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was saying like four different no, you good. Thank you so, for waking up. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. You're welcome. Well, I hope nothing but good things for you. Good vibes for you. Um, I'm, you know, hoping and praying Thank that, you. you know, stuff goes back to a semi-normal where we're able to, you know, experience life how we used to. Um, yeah. And yeah, just do keep doing your thing and doing your stuff in London and your dances and super excited for you. you. And I hope that you have a great one. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. All right. So we'll all see you next time. See you. <laughs> Bye.